My son was murdered. My son was murdered. My son was murdered on December 22, 1994, by Officer Francis Avaldi. My son was murdered. My son was murdered by Officer Francis Avaldi. The police brutality today, it's not something that just happened yesterday or last year. It's just something that has been going on since the creation, since the existence of the police, not only in New York City, but across the country. Police brutality is not a new problem. It has been here since yesterday and yesteryear. Young people find themselves particularly talked about police. One out of 14 youth are arrested annually by the New York Police Department. Youth 13 to 20 years of age have a greater chance of getting arrested than they do of getting a job after school or having an after school program to go to. Nearly 280 young people in New York City are jailed a day for minor offenses like drinking being in the streets, playing loud music, or not having identification. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We're a Thurgood Marshall Academy video production team, and we have created a video about police encounters with our youth. An encounter with the police officer can escalate to physical and mental problems, but worst of all, death. If you've ever been stopped or harassed by the police, then you know how serious learning how to avoid it all is. In this video, you will learn what your rights are when face to face with the police. If you are a young African-American male, or Puerto Rican male, or Latino male, and you are uh, on outside between the hours of, let's say, 9 in, in the evening and 6 in the morning, you're very likely to get stopped no matter what you do. They think that they have a right to stop people randomly and just decide to conduct uh, searches and, and, and stops on them. Um, and it's an illegal practice, and it happens quite often. In New York City between 1997 and 1998, 45,000 people were stopped and frisked by the Street Crimes Unit. The most frequent victims were black and Latino youth, ranging from the ages of 15 to 25. Let's look at a very common situation. Man, we smack. See, now yes. money could not guard me. I almost broke his ankle, sus. You see that? Oh, my God. Yo, son, I can't believe that shot you made, yo. Was you even looking when you took it? Nah, it was like, I don't know. It just came to me, and I just shot it. Yo, how many points you dropped? Yo, 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 fellas, fellas, fellas. Hold up for a second. Yo, fellas, yo, yo, what's up? How you doing? Where you guys coming from? A basketball game. What basketball game? At the Y. At the y. Which Y? Right down on right Well, can we see some ID from you guys? Thank you. Thank you. What time did the game end, fellas? Wow, wow. Really, did your win or did your lose? You won. won. They don't look too happy this evening. Is there a particular reason why you're not happy about winning the basketball game? No. All right. Well, you know, you mind? Can you step on, keep on walking, my man? We'd like to talk to you over here. You mind? Go ahead. Keep going. Here? Just want right to talk there. to him for a little. All right. Make it safe home. Be good, be good. Yeah, you step on over here. You step over here. stepping over there for? Because we want to ask you some questions. Ask some questions for what? Can you just step over there? You got something to say. Always got something to say. You always got something to say. All right, listen, we're going to ask you a few we questions. Go, huh? We're actually going to ask you a few questions. You're going to cooperate. Uh -huh. It could be easy, it could be hard. It's up to you now. Right. How do you want to roll? Ask some questions. All right, yeah. where are you coming from? Why? No, where are you coming from? A basketball game. What time did the game end? At 5 o'clock. Sure, it ended at 5? I said, what are you talking about? Oh, you got your hand in your pocket. Take your hand out your pocket. That's cold out here, that's right. why. Put the ball down. Put the ball down. Turn around, turn around. Put your hands up. Spread your legs out. That's what's wrong with you. You always got something to say. Did Wait, I take you your hands up? Me for, Put your huh? hands up. Put your hands up. For what? Put your hands up. Let's go. Can I ask you any hands up. questions? Put your hands up, turn man. around. Turn around. Let's go.
from the, the thing that makes those stops illegal is, I guess, like I said, they don't have what's called reasonable suspicion. Is the stand that's the standard that the police are supposed to use when they decide to stop someone on the street. Um, and basically, that means they're supposed to articulate uh, the fact that they either saw the person committing a crime or suspected that a crime was afoot. Young people, especially uh, minority kids, African American, Puerto Rican, Hispanic kids, are stopped over and over and over again without cause. And after the Diallo shooting, uh, the numbers became apparent. And during the years 1997 and 1998, for example, there were 45,000 uh, young people who were stopped by this one unit alone, which is a small unit within the New York Police Department. 45,000 of those, 80% of the people who were stopped were immediately released and sent on their way. And that says that the stops were unconstitutional stops. The Fourth Amendment does not allow the police to stop anyone they want, only people for whom they have a reasonable suspicion that they're engaged in criminal activity. The ACLU has put together a bus card with helpful tips on how to protect yourself when approached by the police. And I emphasize to the viewers like you to stay calm and in control of your words and body language. Keep your hands out where the police can see them. It's not a crime to refuse to answer any type of questions that the police may ask. But not answering could make the officer suspicious. Remember that anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. to making this film is to show other young folks 
what to do when they're stopped by the police. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that you're in a life and death type situation whenever you're stopped by the police officer. You know, they don't know who you are. Um, you know who they are. Most of the time, they'll ID themselves. But it's a life and death situation, and it's not to be laughed at, it's not to be joked about. It's a very serious situation. Dante, how did you feel about what happened in the scenario? That cop was so aggressive. I was mad scared. I didn't know you could be arrested without having your ID. The officer violated your rights in that way. You can't legally be arrested for not having ID, but in order to avoid situations like that, you should carry ID at all times. It also would have made the situation better if you had a bad mouth the officer and resisted being pat down. That gave them an excuse to arrest you. Dante, I know you were mad at the time, but you could have expressed your anger by filing a complaint against the officer later. See, when you were arrested, you had three witnesses. They should have been aware of many important facts that could have been helpful to you. Your friend should have looked at the officer badge numbers and tried to remember them. They should have memorized where the incident occurred, what day and time it was. The witnesses should have written these facts down as soon as possible. You could have used these facts if you had decided to file a complaint against the officer. Well, Tamika, sometimes knowing your rights still doesn't protect you from police misconduct. I think the only way to bring police misconduct to an end is for community to start organizing and put pressure on the city about the way police behave. Now here's Carl Flanker from Police Watch, and this is what he has to say. I think the community has to get involved with organizing around the issue. The community has to get out into the streets and do protest rallies. The community has to uh, go to City Hall and, and combat Giuliani. The, com the community has to uh, patrol itself, in a sense, and patrol the, com the police in the community. My name is Peter Chung, and I work with SLAM at Hunter College. Well, right now, we're, we at SLAM have organized this event, and we're trying to continue organize, organizing events that, that are going to be coming upcoming. But we're also trying to encourage students, high school students, college students, and all young people to organize amongst themselves so that they can find their own creative ways to fight against police brutality. I think only when community decides and individuals decide to stand up for themselves and to combat this issue will we actually see any kind of real change. And I think it's going to take a galvanizing a community effort to, to make real change in how policing is done in the city and in this nation. Woman, hold her head and cry Cause her son had been shot down in the street and died From a policeman's bullet Woman, hold her head and cry Who saw the woman cry, wondering how can she work it out? Now she knows that the wages of sin is death, the gift of Jah is life. She cried, Oh, I know Johnny was a good man. She cried.